Hi learners, in this video I am going to talk about commerce and the constituents of commerce. Commerce refers to the exchange or buying and selling of commodities. So especially the exchange of uh, goods on a large scale between uh, different uh, communities and places is called as commerce. Commerce uh, is also called as an integrated activity because it involves not only buying and selling of goods but also involves other servicing activities. Servicing activities refers to those activities which helps us in selling, uh, buying and selling of goods. So some of the servicing activities which aids in commerce are uh, transport, banking, insurance, uh, agency services. So all these services are also a part of commerce. So commerce is a broader term which includes not only buying and selling of goods and services but it also includes other agencies or other services uh, like banking, insurance which facilitate the trade in goods and services. Like take the example uh, when goods are being exported from India to US in that case we require transportation facilities to physically move the goods from uh, India to US further uh, banking services are also required because uh, the importer of the goods who is there in US has to make the payments to the exporter of the goods who is there in India so banking services are also required so further agency services are also required so basically to facilitate commerce a host of services uh, or uh, agency services like banking insurance agency services uh, communication services and all are required now let's further look into the constituents of commerce Constituents of commerce are basically two or commerce which is a broad term can be classified into two, uh, two components. One is trade, the other is commerce. Trade is an activity uh, which refers to only buying and selling of goods and services. Whereas commerce is a broader term which includes not only buying and selling of goods and services but it also includes uh, other agency services uh, like insurance, banking which facilitate commerce. So trade refers to the buying and selling of goods and services and it is basically the means by which goods are exchanged between the producers and consumers. Whereas commerce is an integrated activity which deals with buying and selling of goods and services and it also includes uh, other services uh, or uh, other services uh, which help in aiding commerce. So commerce is that part of the business which is concerned with distribution of goods and uh, uh, providing of services. So commerce, uh, if you see commerce uh, requires um, uh, requires various, uh, commerce requires various aids which facilitate uh, uh, it trading in goods and services such as banking, communication, advertising, transport, insurance, etc. Further, now let's look into the classifications of trade. So trade basically refers to mere exchange of goods and services and trade is a branch of commerce. So it is narrower in scope compared to commerce which is a broader term. So trade is a mere part of commerce and commerce is a broader term. Now trade can be further classified into home trade and foreign trade. Home trade means when sale and purchase of goods happens within the boundaries of a country whereas on the other hand foreign trade is a trade between two or more countries. So home trade can further be classified into wholesale trade and retail trade. Now, when buying and sell of, selling of goods happens on a large scale or when large quantities of uh, goods are involved uh, in, sell, in the selling activity, then it is called as a wholesale trade and the person who is engaged in wholesale trade is called as a wholesaler. Whereas on the other hand, when buying and selling of goods happens on a relatively small scale, then it is called as a retail trade and the person who is engaged in the retail trade is called as the retailer. Further, foreign trade can also be classified into three types. First, foreign trade, uh, first category is import trade. When goods are bro brought from other countries into a country, then it is called as import trade. Like uh, supposing from US, we are getting goods into India, then it is called as an import trade. On the other hand, from India, if you are selling goods to US, then it is called as an export trade. Now, interport trade is a trade wherein a country buys goods from other countries not for using it in its own country but for the purpose of selling it to other countries like take the example i have uh, as uh, you know india buys goods from us and then the goods which are bought from us are not used in india india again sells these goods to bangladesh then it is called as an interport trade so these are the basic classifications of trade
okay now further let's look into the advantages of international trade now international trade helps in optimum utilization of natural resources optimum utilization of natural resources happens when there is an excess supposing in any country there is an excess of certain natural resources then those countries can export those natural resources to other countries and benefit from trade like take the example uh, uh, in gulf countries they have huge resources of oil so crude oil so this crude oil is exported to other countries and thereby uh, by exporting those crude oil to other countries the gulf countries can strengthen their economy further because of trade there is availability of huge variety of goods and because of this availability of vast variety of goods uh, the standard of living of the people is also improved further uh, trade also helps in uh, specialization among countries specialization is a concept wherein every country tries to manufacture goods at which it is best at so when every country specializes in certain uh, goods it leads to improvement in efficiency uh, it leads to increased efficiency in production which in turn uh, leads to uh, you know greater profits for every country further uh, because of trade it is also possible to exchange the technical know how between countries like uh, take the example one such example of exchanging of technical know how is uh, hero honda company which was there in india was an alliance between two companies hero which is an indian company and honda which is a japanese company now this alliance uh, helped uh, both uh, benefit both the companies that is hero as well as honda company now hero company wanted to establish its market in india and it was an indian company so it was favored by the indian government whereas on the other hand honda company which is a japanese company was known on it was known for its technological precision or technological expertise so what happened when hero honda together they started launching two wheelers it picked up huge demand in the indian market okay and uh, because barriers were there okay for in honda cannot come into the indian market and establish itself individually so it had to tie up with hero company so because of this tie up you know uh, joint venture between hero honda company both the companies benefited the hero company got access to technical know how which it would have not got otherwise further uh, to facilitate international trade various servicing facilities like uh, you know in communication banking insurance these facilities have should also develop and therefore international trade also helps in the development of uh, transportation and communication facilities between different countries further because of international trade different countries exchange their goods with each other so this leads to cooperation understanding and also cordial relations among the trading nations so now let's look in some look into some of the disadvantages of uh, international trade firstly because of international trade the domestic industries are at uh, uh, face stiff competition from the foreign uh, counterparts and uh, because many company many in many countries where the domestic industries are not very uh, highly developed or not very technology oriented so in certain case uh, the domestic uh, products of the domestic industries uh, face stiff competition from pro- foreign made goods and these foreign made goods are many times much better than the home made goods so this leads to impediment or obstacle in the development of home industries further uh, international trade also uh, leads to problems relating to deficit in the balance of payments and uh, this also causes uh, make no, make independence further uh, trade also leads to excessive utilization of resources and ultimately causes uh, depletion of uh, economic resources and uh, further uh, because of uh, international trade becomes a difficulty especially in times of war so in times of war uh, in certain uh, if there is war between different countries uh, it is not possible to always uh, exchange goods so because if a, if a country is self depend uh, independent then in, even during times of war it will not pose any problem whereas on the other hand uh, if uh, during uh, time uh, if uh, the country is dependent on other countries even for its basic needs like food grains and all that then during times of uh, war such countries will face severe hardships okay further now let's look into the various uh, aids to trade now trade is a main function of commerce it is a process through which buyers and sellers meet at a common place so basically to facilitate trade there are various aids to commerce which must be made available or which help in trade to happen so first such aid in commerce is uh, which uh, aids in commerce is uh, transport transport is the means of uh, conveyance and movement of goods from one place to another and uh, transport revolution has brought about fundamental change in the world of business and uh, transport is also an essential service which is needed for the development and expansion of trade and the widening up of the markets so next uh, if, uh, trade aid in trade is uh, aid in commerce is communication now communication means exchange of information uh, between people in different places 
and uh, it is necessary to communicate information from one place to another to you know sometimes to negotiate and settle the terms of uh, sales such as the price at which the goods have to be sold the discounts which are to be allowed the facilities of credit credit and uh, modern uh, means of communication like uh, emails teleconference has made uh, communication between uh, people in uh, residing in different parts of the world very easy next is warehousing generally there is a time gap once the goods are manufactured and finally the goods when they move to the end user so during this time gap okay the goods have to be sold uh, stored in warehouses uh, especially agricultural commodities like wheat and rice which are seasonal in nature but uh, these goods are consumed throughout the year so these have to be stored uh, in pro in warehouses under proper condition so warehouse is also an essential part of aids to trade or aids to commerce next uh, we have is insurance now insurance means protection against risk of loss business uh, co covers a huge uh, lots of uh, risks and uncertainties so every trader or businessman wants to carry on uh, the activities of business which and try to eliminate risk wherever possible so an insurance company helps in uh, protecting the businessman against uh, such risk so in in the, in, the, in cases of insurance the insurer which is the business house uh, you know gets protection against certain risk and uncertainties from the insurance companies next we have is uh, banking now finance is required by business houses and this finance is generally provided by banks so it banking is a major of uh, service which is uh, which helps in uh, aids to commerce further generally in case of um, import trade and export trade where the you know buyers and sellers are located in different countries banking helps in uh, you know transferring of funds uh, between the exporting as well as the importing countries next is advertising uh, advertising is a simple uh, you know paid form of uh, non personal uh, presentation and promotion of ideas or uh, goods or services by an identified uh, sponsor or business house so it is a mass paid form of communication so and advertising has evolved since uh, the industrial revolutions and advertising is a way in which companies promote their products and services so advertising is also an essential part of commerce next we have is uh, salesmanship now salesmanship facilitates uh, to, you know making sales so salesmanship is very much required in uh, the sales of services and industrial goods and uh, sales force play an important role because they help in direct marketing and especially in the case of case of selling insurance products and policies next uh, we have is uh, mercantile uh, agents now mercantile agents are the middlemen which form a link between the buyers and the sellers though these mercantile agents do not carry the business in their own name but they facilitate uh, in the process of distribution of goods from the producers to the consumers and next we have is uh, trade promotions now trade no trade promotion organizations are set up in almost all the countries and these trade promotion organizations uh, basically uh, attend to the difficulties which are faced in the promotion and development of uh, trade like we have international trade expo expos or international trade exhibitions which are set up and uh, these exhibitions provide a platform for both the exporters as well as the importers to meet and discuss the terms of trade next we have is global organizations for international trade now these global organization of for uh, global organizations for international trade uh, they attend the trade uh, you know promotion and developments of of trade at an international level and the main objective of these global organizations is to promote international trade so basically these are the various aids to trade in commerce